Hello, my name is Gregory Osborne. I'm an instructor with XR Terra, and in this module, we're going to be talking about skyboxes. So what a skybox is, is basically what gets rendered when nothing is rendered. It is rendered behind all other objects that exist in your scene. It is defined by a material asset that uses a skybox type shader. There's a couple of different ways to make a skybox, either using a 360 image, uh, a cube map, you can assign textures of a cube, or you can use Unity's procedural skybox shader. In fact, the default skybox actually is using Unity's procedural skybox shader. So the way that we actually change our skybox is in the lighting window. I'm going to go into Unity and I'm going to show you where the lighting window can be found. If I go to Window, Rendering, Lighting, this will pop up a lighting window. I don't know, I'll put it somewhere behind my inspector sometimes. And so we have ourselves a lighting window and inside this lighting window, there is three tabs. And the one that we care about is environment. When I select the environment tab, I have this environment section where I can see the skybox material. But if I click on this, it doesn't actually show me where this asset is. And that's because Unity doesn't want to let you mess with the default skybox. They want to make sure that every time you open a new scene, there is some default skybox so you don't feel lost and you don't think that Unity is broken. So if we want to edit or make changes to our skybox, we're going to have to create our own material and assign it the skybox shader that we want and then drag that material into this skybox material reference box. I've actually gone ahead and, and made a couple in advance. So for example, we've got this procedural skybox that we made and I'm going to drag it in and it suddenly changes all of the properties of the sky. I'm going to undo that and we're going to talk about the different types of skybox that there are. There's a couple. The one you might think of on first thought is the panoramic skybox and that's to just get some sort of panoramic image like a 360 image that you can take with a 360 camera and just put that into a scene. So Interestingly enough, one of the nice and easy ways to get a 360 image is Google Maps, because Google Maps went around and drove a car along as many streets as they could with a 360 camera so that you could get 360 images of the entire length of basically every road. And so if you want to get access to those 360 images, there does exist a Chrome extension that you can use called pano fetch which was made and i've added it to chrome this is this only works when you're in chrome um, i believe and if you use google maps while in chrome there's this little yellow guy here which is how you enter street view and you can click and drag them and this i'm i'm in the mit area right here so i'm gonna click and drag my my guy and now I'm in Street View and I can actually be like, here I am right in front of MIT, but you'll notice this is a 360 image. And what the Pano Fetch extension allows me to do is click on my extensions set up right here, select Pano Fetch, and it'll ask me what size I want to download this 360 image in. And it's one is the lowest quality, five is the highest quality. I'll often go with something like four. It's nice to have a pretty nice detailed skybox. So I would choose four. I've actually gone ahead and already downloaded one of these already. So what I would then do is once I've downloaded it, I would drag it into my uh, Unity project folder. And in fact, it's going to be under textures. I believe it's this panorama A. If I double click on it, this is the actual texture or image that I've downloaded. You can kind of see it's a little bit stretched around the bottom and the top, but you know, for the most part, you can kind of tell that yes, this is a 360 image. It's a little bit warped. It's uh, in an equirectangular format. And if I want to, I can use this texture in a material that uses the panoramic skybox. So I'm going to create a material. This material will be called panoramic skybox two. And in this material, by default, it starts with the Universal Render Pipeline Lit Shader. But I don't actually want to use that shader. I want to make this panoramic skybox a skybox shader. So what I would do is I would click on this shader dropdown. I would go down to where it says skybox. I would select it. And you can see here, here's my four options for skybox shaders. Because I've downloaded a panoramic image, I would select panoramic. And then I, it would ask me to choose a texture. And the text that I would choose would be I, I believe it's called Panorama. Uh, and then yes, like I mentioned, there we go. 
And so now that I have Panoramic Skybox 2, if I want to assign this Skybox to my Unity scene, I would go into the Lighting tab. Well, again, that's Window Rendering Lighting. I would go into the Environment section, and I would drag in Panoramic Skybox 2 into the Skybox material. And now I'm surrounded by the delightful environment of the middle of the street in front of MIT. So you can use this with pretty much any kind of Google Stream View image, but in general, any 360 image, you can turn into a texture that you can use as a skybox. And you don't have to have it be 360 degrees. You can have it be 180 degrees. There's also, if you have, there's a couple of different layouts for how this panorama can work. But in general, this is how you would use some sort of 360 texture in order to give yourself a, a custom skybox. Now, that's not the only type of skybox that we can use. There's also six-sided projection. This is where you basically build a cube around you using six different textures. And there's also cube maps. So cube maps, uh, both of these tend to be something that you like get from a designer or somebody who's like just creating a, a skybox for you custom. So, but you can sometimes find cube maps online. So I've gone and like downloaded these. These aren't going to look particularly great because I'm pretty sure that um, they have a, a better way of actually accessing these. You might have to like download a special package or whatever. So these aren't going to be highest resolution images. In fact, let me go through that process right now. Let's choose one of these and download it. Let's, uh, yeah, this one looks kind of cool. I'll save this image as downloaded for workshop cube map, save it in my downloads folder. Then I'll kind of drag it into Unity. I'm putting in the textures folder and it'll kind of import. Once it's in here, I called it downloaded for workshop cube map. Right now, it's actually got a texture shape of 2D. So when you select the actual texture that you download, you can change a couple things about it. Um, the texture type, like is it a normal map? Is it a cookie? Is it a light map? And the texture shape. Now, our, in our case, if we want to make something a cube map, it's the texture type of default, and the texture shape is a cube. So when I select cube and I hit apply here in the inspector, you'll notice that our uh, texture actually changes here into sort of a sphere, kind of to represent that this can be used for a skybox. So if I was to go into my materials folder and create for myself a new material and call it cube map material two because I already did this exercise. I go into my cube map material two. I go down to skybox shaders and I choose cube map. Then I can select the cube map that I just downloaded here. It's called downloaded for workshop cube map. There we go. And then if I want to set my uh, skybox to that, I drag it in. There we go. It looks cool. That actually doesn't look too bad at all, although it is a little bit perhaps grainy. Maybe Zoom won't let you tell the difference, but I can tell it's a little bit compressed. And this is not the highest quality image that they have, but it's mostly for demonstration purposes anyway. So there's cube maps. There's the panoramas. There's also six sided where you just have like six images. But the last and most important type of skybox that we have is the procedural skybox. And in fact, Unity's default skybox is a procedural skybox. So I'm actually gonna create myself a new material. It's gonna be called Awesome Procedural Skybox. I'm gonna set the shader on this Awesome Procedural Skybox to be the Skybox Procedural. And then I'm going to drag into lighting this material, and this is going to be our procedural skybox. And you'll notice, yeah, it looks very similar to the default Unity skybox because the default Unity skybox is a procedural skybox shader. If I want to make changes to the skybox, which I now can because I've made my own custom material, and I can't do this to Unity's default skybox, but I can to my own, I can change the size of the sun. I can change a couple of settings about how like blurry the edges of the sun are. I can change the thickness of the sky. Um, and I can also change the color of the sky. So I can make the sky look red. I can make the sky look purple. And I I can change the atmosphere thickness and it changes like different color properties. I can change the color of the ground. I can also make changes to like exposure so I can make everything feel super bright or not. In fact, I'm going to change the sky to something more interesting like green. Let's make it green. I'm going to show you that this procedural sky box actually moves the sun in the sky based on the direction of your directional light. So right now, our directional light, if I, if I focus in on it, you can see that the rotation of the directional light is represented by where the sun in the sky is. And in fact, if I was to edit the rotation of this directional light, 
not only would I be able to change the position of the sun in the sky, but because it's a procedural skybox, it actually simulates a sunrise and sunset in the skybox. So if you want to change the time of day, sometimes the easiest way to do it is just to use a procedural skybox and then rotate your directional light so that the sun is below the horizon. And now it's nighttime. And then you can simulate a sunrise by bringing it back up um, you know, and there we go. Now we've got a beautiful morning and then we've got a noon time and then you can have it keep going and then set the sun on the other side. That's going to be this module on skyboxes. Hopefully you have a little bit of fun editing the skyboxes in your lighting tab and, and kind of messing around with what kind of things you can put in the sky. Thank you for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in the next module.